Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. It's Monday morning, March the 8th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. I'm so very glad you could join me for devotions this morning. We're continuing our exploration into the parables of Jesus, and today we're looking at a parable in Luke chapter 12, 13 to 21, where Jesus tells the story about the rich fool. Now, this is what he records. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me to be judge or arbitrator between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And then he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and I'll build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. So in the time that Jesus was teaching, it, it was common for people to come to the rabbis and to inquire um, with them about issues that they might be having with one another. And the rabbis were looked to as a source of wisdom uh, to help sort these issues out. And in this particular setting, a man had come to ask Jesus to help settle a dispute between him and his brother, his older brother, over a family inheritance. Now, when a man passed, passed away, Deuteronomy 21.17 tells us that the inheritance would be divided amongst the sons and the eldest son would receive a double portion uh, of, what is of what the younger sons would receive. Now apparently this younger son who was complaining to Jesus, um, he was saying that his older brother had not given him a fair portion or any portion of the inheritance and he was asking Jesus as the rabbi to help settle this dispute and have his brother uh, give what he rightfully expected to receive. Now, Jesus sensed when this man had uh, brought this up, he sensed that there was a core issue in this uh, family dispute, and that core issue was one of greed. And he perceived that this man's covetous spirit would do him much more harm than not having the share of his family inheritance. So he decided to speak to the issue of greed, saying, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Then he told this parable, and in the story there was a man who was enamored with the fact that he had a successful crop one year. And it wasn't a bad thing that this man had a plentiful crop, but what was bad was that his priorities in life were all self-centered. And uh, I think when we look at greed, to be kept from greed, there's one overall principle that we must be persuaded of, that um, one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Life has many twists and turns. And some people think that it's what you possess materially that makes your life successful or not. But the Lord... Um, warns us not to look at life that way. You know, having success in his farm's harvest, this man in the parable, he uh, turned his focus away from God and onto building his own kingdom for himself. And this is why we are told that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's not only just a sin to uh, give material things too high of a place in, in our lives. It, it's not wise because 
you know, we can be esteemed in everyone else's eyes and we can have power and nice things, but be very impoverished in God's eyes. And that, my friends, is a tragedy if that's where we're standing. Um, we can store up the very best treasures on the earth and spend all of our time and energy, consume all of our energy amassing these things to ourselves and making our houses and our properties look just perfect thinking that we are gonna, we're going to secure ourselves a future and, and be able to um, amass all these things so that we can eat, drink, and be merry. Yet, at the same time, we can fail to see the truth. All of our earthly wealth, power, possessions, and health can be removed from us at any moment. At the snap of a finger, it can all be gone. We're only a heartbeat away from eternity. And as human beings, naturally we are arrogant and foolish when it comes to this, not thinking in terms of eternity, but in the present. Thinking that we have plenty of time for the present right now to enjoy ourselves at the expense of investing in the riches of eternity, in the spiritual riches, in knowing God, in becoming close to God. Um, but God knows the appointed time that each one of us has to live. And uh, all people, great and small, at the end of all things, we're going to have to stand before God. And we're not going to be able to take any of our money or possessions with us to the other side. Um, those things are going to be given to somebody else. All the things we work for. Um, the only thing that's going to matter when we get to the other side, is not whether we are rich here on the earth or powerful or popular here on the earth, but whether we were rich toward God. And I don't think that what Jesus is saying here is that we're not to concern ourselves with our finances or make good decisions to make sure that um, we're not a financial burden on other people. But what he is saying is that if we look at our financial portfolio, for our security, for our satisfaction and our salvation at the neglect of spending time with God. When we die, everything we own is given to somebody else and we stand before the Lord in judgment. Our lives will be required of us when our days are complete. No one can skirt this. We're going to be judged by the living God for what we've done with the life that he's given to us. And, and being rich towards God, it, it means that uh, we need to have the po po proper view of money and possessions here in the earth, realizing that absolutely everything that we own, including our health, um, it actually belongs to God, and it's on loan to us for a period of of time, a very short blink in eternity. And God God asks us to be good stewards of the gift of life He has given us to invest our lives for the glory of His kingdom and to be rich towards Him. For this parable, the rich, yeah, the rich fool considered nothing about eternity and everything about the present. And he had a lost eternity uh, to, to face on the other side. So today, don't store up your treasures here on the earth where moth and rust can destroy and thieves can break in and steal, but rather store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Be rich towards God today. This is Food for Thought. God bless.